how to stand out on social media as an entrepreneur. Think about this here for a moment. I want you to think about if I were to call you, you, if I were to call you and say, let's get together for a meeting. What's the meeting about? I have an idea. I want us to start a media company together. What do you mean, Pat? Let's start a media company together. Tell me about what you mean. Let's start our own TV station. Let's start our own radio company, okay? Our own radio station. Let's start our own satellite where we can be anywhere live and anybody can see it. Let's start our own newspaper, our own magazine. Let's start our own any our own mailing company to send letters, birthday cards, anniversary cards. But let's start a let's start a massive media company together. How much money do you think you and I would need to start that media company? 10 million, 20 million, 30, 50? I don't know, but I know the number is a pretty big number to start the media company with. However, here's the key. Today, you and I can start that media company for zero. Here's why. Let me show social media. A lot of times people look at different platforms and we use them, but we don't really know what it's about. I'm going to explain it to you as an entrepreneur what these platforms are to you as an entrepreneur. Okay. So, how do you, Inc., stand out? How do you, Inc., stand out? We have eight platforms here. Blog, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, YouTube, Podcast, Facebook, LinkedIn. Watch this. Newspapers, the old newspaper today is the blog. It's been replaced by the blog. There used to be a time where the journalists who worked for New York Times, LA Times, all this stuff were writing articles and people read about it and shared with other people. Today, newspapers have been replaced by blogs. Who can start it? Anybody. You, for free. We read magazines about gossip, all this other stuff, you know, uh, to see who this person, what this person is doing, entertainment, all this stuff. Today, that's been replaced by Twitter. I use Twitter to follow news, to see what words are trending. That is a free platform to everybody. Instagram. We used to have photo albums. When's the last time you and I bought a photo album? It's been replaced by Instagram. And you know, a picture says more than words do. So we see pictures there. It tells us what's going on. We follow it. Live TV has been replaced by Periscope. It's a free platform. Yesterday I'm driving. Yes, I'm, I am driving. And I'm listening to Donald Trump at the same time announce his, his uh, new tax program if he becomes a president. I'm literally watching it on Periscope while driving live TV. I didn't have access to this before. We were at uh, uh, Paris. I'm on top of the Eiffel Tower. So I try to see if Periscope works. I turn on Periscope and I say, I'm on top of Eiffel Tower. 2,000 people within 20 seconds are following me and I'm simply going like this with the camera. They're watching it on Periscope, live TV. There is no news station there. It's free satellite. TV has been replaced by YouTube. It, it, depending on what your market is, you're going to see more people watching YouTube videos than TV. I watch more YouTube videos than I watch television. I don't watch television anymore. I watch YouTube. I know none of the shows on TV, but I do know different entrepreneurs, different channel stations, things on YouTube that I watch. Radio stations have been replaced by podcasts. If you look at radio stations, I was meeting with one of the top executives of one of the largest radio companies uh, in the world today, and he and I had a meeting together. He was telling me. Radio is on a downtick to the point where they don't want to report anymore how many listeners they have. Because if you tell them how many more listeners you have, it's not the same anymore. Podcast is free. Uh, we used to not use podcasts before, and we just started our podcast, would you say six weeks ago, five weeks ago, roughly six weeks ago, five weeks ago. And it's getting us on a platform we weren't a part of before. Then you have Facebook. Hey, there was a time you wrote letters. You wrote birthday cards. Uh, we wrote anniversary cards. We don't write it anymore. You simply go on Facebook. You say, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Your kid looks amazing. I cannot believe what's happened. I miss you. I feel like I see you every day because I follow your kids. That's Facebook. And on LinkedIn, very simple. Resumes and business cards have been replaced by LinkedIn. When I hire somebody, when I'm hiring somebody for our company, I go through LinkedIn. And by the way, Every one of these platforms, I can give you numerous stories of clients, business partners, somehow, someway, somebody that I did business with that I met through here. When I tell you I met through here, we're not talking uh, $500,000 type of money. We're talking lots of money that was made through these platforms that we met and helped grow my financial firm that I'm running with our leaders. It helped grow that platform, PHP Agency, because I realize if we're going to be competitive and I'm competing 
you know, with $400 billion companies, $600 billion companies, they have a budget of $2 billion a year to do advertising and sponsor some golf court, golf golfer or sponsor some basketball player or football player. We're a startup company. We get started with 60 agents in 09, and now we have 1,800 agents in 37 states. I can't go have $50 million to put into advertising. This has become the great equalizer versus going against the bigger companies if you use social media properly. So now, many times if you're new to social media, maybe you're dabbling in Facebook or something, but you're not necessarily fully in. You'll look at all this stuff and you'll say, my goodness, this is just so overwhelming to me. I feel like I'm going to spend all day long just being on social media. This could be very overwhelming. So I'll hear people say, I don't have the time to do social media. Or I don't have the time to do this. And these common objections out here, and I'll address every one of them with you here. One of them could be, I don't have any time. Okay. Um, I run a firm, financial firm. I have employees, staff, agents, attorneys, uh, carriers, partners I have to negotiate with, software. I have all these other things that I need to be doing on a daily basis. Okay. I need to travel, go visit offices, go visit vendors. All these things I need to do. I have a, a, a three and a half year old. I have a two year old. I'm married. I uh, uh, create content. I uh, write books. I have family I need to spend time with, go have fun, sporting events, all this stuff, travel the world, all this stuff. There's still time. So every time I hear somebody say, I don't have the time, it's, I think it's a lack of efficiency. So I'll tell you how I do it, okay? Blog, I write an article a week minimum on Sunday nights when everybody's asleep. I'll write typically at 11 o'clock at night. My wife's asleep, kids are asleep, it's quiet, I got an hour and a half to write an article. I'll get on there, I'll write it, and then I'll send it out. Um, if you can do it two, three times a week, that's more power to you. I do a minimum of once a week. Twitter is very easy, it takes 30 seconds to, an hour, to a minute to send a tweet, it's not that long. But when I get up early in the morning, I'll normally go through the news for about 20 to 30 minutes on Twitter. And I'll follow the news in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, six o'clock, I'll get up and I'll Follow the news. Instagram, it's easy, one post a day. That doesn't take a long time to put. Periscope, I do it maybe once a week when I'm at a special place that I'm doing Periscope with. It gets me into a whole new marketplace. YouTube, we'll do two videos a week regularly. We do two videos a week, and uh, that doesn't take a long time. And by the way, before you used to have a whole camera set up, all this stuff, this is how I got started with a, a regular iPhone, regular camera. Nowadays, you can do all these selfies. Matter of fact, it's more real when you do it that way anyways, but you have content with this anywhere. This camera used to be a $5,000 camera 20 years ago. Today, it's called a phone. You can do that from anywhere. Podcast, you'll need quiet time by yourself. Facebook, once a day. And LinkedIn, for me, LinkedIn, a lot of people use LinkedIn quite a lot. I'm not a big LinkedIn person that I use it regularly. I have set up my LinkedIn and everything else gets pushed to LinkedIn when people want to find out who Patrick Bay David is. They go here and say, okay, so I know who Patrick Bay David is, boom, they leave. Now, if I post content on LinkedIn, it's maybe once or twice a week, maybe once or twice a week. So my time being put into LinkedIn is maybe, maybe 10 minutes a week. Maybe it's 10 minutes a week here, hour and a half here, 30 minutes in the morning here for my news, five minutes here. If I do video, 15 minutes here per week, this will take me two hours per week. If I do one of these every other week, say an hour to two hours, and that's another 10 minutes. That's not a lot of time. That's a couple hours a week is what we're talking about per week if you do. So when you say you don't have time, you have plenty of time to do it too. I hear some people say I'm a private person. Well, let me explain about the private person. I'm a very private person myself as well. But, but I had to differentiate between the two. So let me, let me, let me kind of explain what I mean by this. There's a big difference between being private and between being a marketer. If you're private, you don't need to do a video and talk about your personal life, your marriage, your relationship. You don't need to do that if that's not what you want to do. You don't have to do that. Now, if you're going to create content for moms, we have uh, my sister and, and Marlene, Paulette and Marlene, they post Momtrepreneur. That's what they brand. The other day, Marlene was over. She had a shirt on called Momtrepreneur. My sister wears a shirt called Momtrepreneur, so it's Mom Entrepreneur. They combine it together. Great. So that's what they're marketing. Maybe they'll talk about, I went today and saw my kids and I did this and I was spending time with my kids and at the same time I run a business. If I wasn't an entrepreneur, I couldn't do this. Great, that's what they're branding. But if you don't wanna brand that, you don't have to brand that. Your personal life doesn't have to be told to anybody. However, remember, let's redefine entrepreneurship real quick. Paul and I were talking earlier and I said to me, entrepreneurship is purely marketing. 
And he said, so wouldn't you consider Steve Wozniak an entrepreneur? I said, not, I don't think Steve Wozniak's an entrepreneur. Here's why. Steve Wozniak is an engineer. He happens to own a piece of Apple, but he's not a market. He's not the entrepreneur. Steve Jobs is the entrepreneur because he's the marketer. He packaged this product in a way that you and I want to buy. He packaged this in a way that you and I want to buy. This is the design. This is marketing. What's inside of it is an engineer, right? So if you're an entrepreneur and you're a marketer, you got to think like a marketer. As, as private as you may be, it doesn't matter. You're not... You are not going to make it as an entrepreneur if you stop thinking of yourself as a marketer. Everything you got to think of as marketing. It's marketing. It's marketing. It's marketing that you're doing, right? Your domain is marketing what you do, which leads to you selling your products, services to whoever it is that you're marketing to. So, okay, now three, how do I make money? So that was one of my questions when I first found out about social media. So how do you make money? What's the purpose of doing this? What's the purpose of doing that? Let me explain to you. I found... One contact from here who followed my YouTube videos, who was following me here and watching my YouTube videos, that one contact made me a million dollars. Just telling you right now. This contact through here, somebody who was watching videos, made the company who knows how much money over the next 3, 6, 12 months because they saw the content from here. I got a contact from here that came through LinkedIn who was watching the videos for four years and all of a sudden that client came made a few hundred thousand dollars to the company. People who read the articles here, they come back and they say, hey, I like it. Every one of these have made money. The purpose of you doing this, it's not for you to make, you know, uh, 20 cents here. And by the way, some people, if you have YouTube ads and you think you're going to make a lot of money on YouTube ads, what's the number where you can start really making money on YouTube ads? A million Millions, views a day? Yeah. You got to get a million views a day to make $5,000, $10,000 a month. The numbers are out of control. So you're not doing this to make money from here. You're doing this to help your platform, your base grow. Uh, and, and here's another thing. TED Talks, they had a convention in, in uh, 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 Seattle, I believe, and, and one of the gentlemen that got up and spoke, and he said, the next 10, 20 years, there's two things that's going to be very valuable. One is data. Two is education. So data is why did Facebook pay billions for Instagram? Because they have data. They have data of billions of pictures on there. That's a lot of value, right? Why is certain companies like Twitter, no matter how much people bash and say, you know, 80% of users on Twitter are fake. You know, nowadays you'll see people who have, you know, 380,000 followers. There is now apps that you can go audit that person on what percentage of their followers are accurate followers. What is that? Uh, 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 what is it? Twi Twitter audit? Yeah. Twitter audit. Twitter audit. Paul, can we put a link? Just put a put a picture of what Twitter audit looks like on the website so they can see it on the video. Got it. And then let's put the link on the bottom that they can go to Mario. Let's make sure to do that. Twitter audit. Matter of fact, go on that link and check on some people. You for for yourself. Some people you work with and check on them and see what percentage of their followers are valid followers or not. Some politicians got caught because they bought, you know, six hundred thousand followers who were fake followers. Nowadays you can buy that for a hundred dollars. But uh, people are starting to realize what's fake and what's real. So you don't need to fabricate your following there, right? So, but it's about education and data. So the more you create education on your videos or your blog, you're educating people, that is data to you. That's content. That's the future. That's why Khan Academy was picked up by Bank of America and they partner because people want routes on how to educate the world. You can actually do that with all the free... Uh, platform that you have here. Here's another one. People say, no one knows who I am. No one knows who I am. I have a friend of mine. His name is Edwin Lopez. Good friend. Uh, he is by far the best detailer I've ever dealt with, ever. Uh, his company's name is Artistic Detailing. Can we put a picture up of Artistic Detailing? He's the only person in America that services five Bugattis. In the world, he services five Bugattis in the world. Now, he gets paid two to $10,000 to service Bugattis, he got paid $20,000 because the Bugatti owner wanted him to go and travel with them all over the place. But he gets paid that kind of money. And he's incredible at what he does. When he comes and services our cars, he cleans areas that I don't even pay attention to. But when him and I spoke years back, I said, listen, brand yourself. Go out there and talk. Make yourself be noticed. So on Instagram, his business is purely through Instagram. His business is not through Facebook, Twitter. It's an Instagram-driven product. I think he's got I don't know how many... How many followers does he have on Instagram, Mario? Would you say 20,000 uh, uh, followers, something like that? I, let's put one of the pictures up so people can see what kind of likes 
uh, uh, artistic auto detailing. He's got 15,200 uh, uh, followers. I'll take one of the pictures. Here, 600 likes, 300 likes, 220 likes, 365 likes. And that got his brand to the point where, you know, he's probably the most famous celebritized detailer in Beverly Hills everyone uses and he'll go to client's house and he'll do 20 cars. He used to be small, detailing for nothing, and he is now big, but he leveraged Instagram. There's another uh, person, good friend of mine, Kelly Nishimoto, uh, uh, who has a brand, her pants brand is called uh, Cute Booty. My wife loves the, the pants that she makes. Kelly Nishimoto started her brand and just recently, I think it was on Instagram, when one of the videos got 68 million views, what was it? Was it uh, 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 YouTube got 68 million views. And when that thing got 68 million views, they didn't have enough orders to take because there were so many people ordering her pants. The quality is incredible. The material is incredible. You know, it, it's something that can compete against some of these other guys that I actually think it's better than Beachbody and some of these other brands that are out there. Uh, uh, what's the other one that uh, uh, Lululemon is a Lululemon that's out there as well. It's another brand that's out there. It's fun. Her brand is better than all of them. When you feel the quality, if, if you're a lady and you're like, let's put a picture up and put a link to Kelly Nishimoto's uh, website. Order one of her pants. You'll see what I'm talking about. And Dean Mason, good friend of mine, Dean Mason. His, uh, this is a family to us. We love DJ Dean Mason. He's probably one of the top 50 EDM uh, DJs in the world. This guy started small. We sat down at PF Chang's probably four years ago and I said, you need to have a bigger presence on social media. His Instagram today, he puts pictures on Instagram, 1200 likes, 1500 likes. And this hat that you saw me wear on one of the videos last week or two weeks ago, Officially Addicted, this is his brand. This is his brand on what he's done. But he started small with social media and it started expanding. And he didn't know a lot about social media. He gradually started growing out. Everybody in the EDM world knows who he is. He does events where? He does events in what all over the world. He's done events. He's phenomenal at what he does. And the last one I'll tell you is this. Some people say, I'm not good with technology. I'm just not a technology person. You know, nowadays, think about before you had to learn how to use the VHS, you had to learn how to use the TV. You had to learn how to use the remote control, all this stuff. You had to learn how to use the radio. You had to learn how to use all of these platforms. Today, you have one tool you need to learn how to use. This is it. So when you say you're not good with technology, they have made it so simple today that my father, who's 74 years old, comes to me and shows me some of the features on apps that I don't even know about. And he uses social media. Gabriel, let's give him some love. Can we put a picture up there of my dad? Just give him some love. Uh, he's, he's become a social media guy. He follows everything on social. My dad is on Periscope. Can you understand? My dad's 74 years old using Periscope, right? So when, when I hear people telling me I'm too old, I'm too this, I think one of the best people right now on social media is Donald Trump. And he's, what, 66, 67 years old. He uses Twitter better than, you know, 20-year-olds use Twitter. He uses Instagram, Twitter. Periscope, Facebook, YouTube, blog. He uses every platform to get himself to where he's at right now, where he's running for his campaign. He doesn't need any funding. Why? Because 100% of his stuff is based on his following that he has from social media. So now let's talk about how do you actually go about standing out on social media uh, as an entrepreneur. So let's talk about that. I got, I got a few points for you. Okay? And it's, it's specific points that I'll go through. One... Uh, uh, one, have a message, okay? Have a message slash opinion. So when I say a message is, what is your message going to be? For instance, is it gonna be financial advice, real estate advice, health and fitness? Is it gonna be uh, uh, entrepreneurship, selling? Is it gonna be diet? It doesn't matter. Have something that your message is around. The more specific it is, the better you do. There's a, you can be general, and general is not going to get you what you're looking for. Get as specific as possible. So if you can have 20 different things you want to talk about, bring it back down to 10, bring it back down to 5, bring it down to 3, then pick the number one thing and talk about that and make that your message. Number two, value-based. Everything is about value. If I read something that's valuable, you know what I do? I share it. If I read a blog from somebody the other day, I read an article that said... Um, uh, and let's post that on the bottom as well. This was a great article. The article was, you know, something about why 
uh, your car has a lot to do with the success of your business as an entrepreneur, right? So this was a blog that was written. I shared it. It was shared 75 times or so. And that person who wrote that blog was not on Forbes. It was not an entrepreneur or an Inc. article. That person automatically, he wrote the article, okay? I'm one of the person that read it. I shared it on my platform. And all of a sudden, he got noticed by this platform. So because he wrote that article, I shared it. This, mar this following is now following him because he brought value with the article that he wrote. Very good article that he wrote, right? Let's give him some love on the bottom. I don't know who this person is who wrote it, but it's a very good article that he wrote, okay? Three, target audience, okay? Let me explain to you what I mean by target audience. Who is your audience, okay? A lot of times, the more specific, everything is about specific efficiency, specific message, specific value that has to do with the message, specific target audience. Who is your target audience. You're not trying to be everything to everybody. What is your target audience? You're not wanting everybody to agree with you or like you or listen to you. You want that specific target audience uh, to, like for instance, can you imagine if let's just say I'm uh, Kelly Nishimoto and I have my cute booty brand, right? Would it make any sense for my audience to be marketing to 48-year-old men? Not at all, right? I imagine if I am a 22-year-old, I want my target audience to be 22-year-olds, and I'm going to, you know, uh, senior homes and I'm marketing over there. I'm not going to find a 22-year-old. So this leads me to point number four is be where your audience is. Audience is, okay? Disregard my handwriting. Be where your audience is, right? Be where your audience is. Point number five, be relevant, okay? Be relevant. When you're, when you're writing stuff initially, it's going to be difficult to be relevant, but eventually, like you look at Grant Cardone, he's becoming very relevant. His Periscope's got, I don't know how many people that follow stuff on Periscope, his Twitter account. Gary Vaynerchuk has become so noisy with everything he was doing with Wine Library, because before he wanted to talk about wine, that he became so noisy, so loud, that eventually he is now relevant everywhere. It doesn't matter what it is, he became relevant. It doesn't happen overnight. This is a process, and most people, when they create the platform, they get a little bit frustrated because they want it to happen overnight. It doesn't, but your goal is to eventually become irrelevant, right? Six, 10 o'clock news. Let me explain what I mean by 10 o'clock news. 10 o'clock news is a lot of people write a blog, and you don't see something for six more months. Then they write another one. Then they write another one within two days. Then they don't write one for three months. Look, I tell our team. 10 o'clock news happens every night. Remember growing up, it was a 10 o'clock news. Everybody watched it. That's how your content needs to be. It needs to be like the 10 o'clock news. Every day, specific time. Or every you know, week, you write your article on Sunday night, it needs to go out. You produce your videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, it needs to go out. But it needs to be like the 10 o'clock news. Consistency. Seven, authentic. Okay? Authentic. You ever hear uh, uh, people say, be different. You ever heard these campaigns? Be different. Be some, you know, be different. Don't be like everybody else. Well, the best way for you to be authentic is to be you. Did that make sense? The only person that knows how to be you is you. So the more authentic you're going to be you, the, the more authentic you're going to be, the, the more different you're going to be than everybody else. But if you watch someone's video and you say, I'm going to speak like Gary Vaynerchuk, or I'm going to speak like Tony, or I'm going to speak like Grant, or I'm going to speak like Ty, or I'm going to speak like Pat, or I'm going to speak like... it does. You be you. You be authentic the way you are. If you're not loud, if your tone is lower, whatever it is, you be you. And the last one is transparency. Transparency. If you make mistakes, talk about it. If you're not doing something uh, uh, that didn't work for you, talk about it. Be transparent about it. If you're coming across as being too perfect, you don't connect with everybody. Be transparent about things that you're doing. We didn't do podcasts for a long time. We made a lot of mistakes with YouTube initially trying to do everything for everybody and we got more specific to now we talk about specifically startup entrepreneurship is what our message is about and anything around startup entrepreneurship is what we talk about. But that was about becoming more specific. Become more transparent. Viewers like you to be transparent instead of trying to be somebody you're not. So these are some of the basic things that you have now to look at social media in a different way and to figure out your formula on how to stand out on social media as an entrepreneur. Now, some of you may say, well, Pat, I don't know how to get my message, my opinion, you know, this to be very clear for me. This is what I would tell you to do. 
2003, I got my hands on a set of 83 questions that I went to a beach that I used to go to every Sunday. And I took these questions, it was six hours, and I went through answering all these questions. And I had a breakthrough myself. And I decided about three months ago to make those questions public on my website. And, and when I tell you hundreds of people I've taken and they send me private messages, this questions, did this for me, I got so clear on what I'm doing. It's a free 83 questions, but read the instructions before you go through the questions. Don't skim through the questions. To be effective, you will need to uh, uh, go through them one by one by one. Don't go all the way to the bottom and work your way back up like we used to do before. If you're serious about really wanting to build a brand and really wanting to have a breakthrough, go through those questions. Mario, let's make sure to put the link on the bottom. It's going to be on the description if you're watching YouTube. If you're watching on my website, it'll probably be on the link. You'll see it as well. And then uh, from there, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to also subscribe to this channel. If you got any questions about what I talked about, post your questions on the bottom.